Hey, it's Metagosis Perfectionalis, and this is a series known as Labs. In the last video, we have talked about beta-2 microglobulin. Today, we'll talk about uric acid in the blood. So this is serum uric acid. In the past, gout was known as the disease of kings, because if you could afford steak, beer, and seafood in the freaking 16th century, you were rich. Now, there was another disease known as the royal disease, and that's hemophilia. And we have talked about this in my series on bleeding and coagulation disorders. To understand uric acid, we need to understand purine metabolism first. I have a separate video on this topic in my rheumatology playlist. So what are these purines and pyrimidines? These are parts of your DNA. Oh, really? Yeah, they are the nitrogenous bases. Today, we focus on purines. Purines, pure as gold adenine and guanine. These are your purines. Your DNA is made of sugar, nitrogenous bases, including purines and phosphate. These are the purines, these are the pyrimidines, and you know the difference between a nucleoside and the nucleotide. When you add a phosphate, that's a tide. Your cells are constantly making new DNA because your cells are dividing. I need DNA replication. And they are making new proteins. I need some protein synthesis. Any condition that will increase this work will lead to increase purine metabolism, which will end up as uric acid. Please don't ever confuse thiamine with thiamine. Let's say you want to buy a car. You have two choices, a new car or a used car. If you want to make purines, you can either make new purines, this is called de novo synthesis, or recycle purine, this is called the salvage pathway. This is just life. There is a non-profit in the United States known as the Salvation Army. The salvation because they salvage stuff. You know, folate, yeah, green leafy vegetables. Folate is important to make DNA, which includes purines and pyrimidines, etc. Not just folate, but vitamin B12 as well. You'll make some doozy purines. Purines will make DNA and RNA. This is de novo synthesis from scratch. So let's dig deeper into the de novo purine synthesis. We always start with ribose 5-phosphate and then PRPP, purines and pyrimidines. And don't forget, these are your purines. Tell me more about how you made purines. I made IMP first and then IMP gave me AMP and GMP. Have you noticed the P? Yeah, phosphate, therefore nucleotides. Since we don't care about pyrimidines in this lecture, forget it. Now the story is more simple. This is your de novo synthesis pathway. To put it in a nice diagram, it looks like this. We love AMP and GMP because they will give you DATP and DGTP respectively, and these will give you DNA, RNA, all of the doozy stuff. Now let's talk about purine degradation. Let's break it down. So IMP, thank you so much. You have done your job properly. Now let's degrade you. Let's break you down into enosine, hypoxanthine, xanthine, uric acid, and you will end up in the trash, in the urine. Same thing, AMP, you have done your job properly, thank you. Adenosine, adenine, and then look at, look at this, uric acid. And then GMP, oh, uric acid at the end. And now to the salvation, the salvage. I was dying, but suddenly had a second chance at living. I was degraded into uric acid, but suddenly had a second chance at salvage into AMP, IMP, and GMP yet again. Let me explain the purine salvage system in the words of Dr. Jordan Peterson. Well, if you look at the mythos of the archetype, you have the IMP, AMP, and GMP. These are the heroes. The heroes were going to descend into hell. But then salvation happened. APRT and AGPRT said, no, you will have another chance. Instead of being just a bloody useless tyrant, you can go back to rescue your father. And that's salvation. That's salvage. People think that this is simple. It's not simple. It's complicated. And then you go back to becoming a hero and killing the dragon. So take personal responsibility. Clean your room so that you may have a chance at salvage. Otherwise, it's the downward spiral and you will descend into piss, I mean the abyss. And that's that. Now, since HGPRT is a doozy enzyme that helps in salvage process so that we do not lose all of our useful resources, imagine a patient with Lishnian syndrome. This patient has no HGPRT. This patient is incapable of salvage. And that's why everything is gonna descend into the abyss. You'll have increased uric acid in the blood and therefore in the urine. 
We divide joint diseases into non-inflammatory, inflammatory, septic and hemorrhagic. Gout is inflammatory. And I've talked about gout in my series called Rheumatology. Gout is an inflammatory arthritis caused by deposition of microscopic crystals. In case of gout, it's the monosodium urate crystal. And this is the most epic definition of gout ever. Now, is aspirin good for gout or bad for gout? Well, it's complicated. Low-dose aspirin is antiplatelet, as you know, but high-dose aspirin is anti-inflammatory. And as you know, gout is an inflammatory freaking arthritis. And therefore, high-dose aspirin is good for gout. It actually stimulates the secretion and excretion of uric acid in the kidney, trying to ameliorate your hyperuricemia. This was profound. High-dose aspirin is uricosuric, uric acid in the urine. Contrast that with low-dose aspirin, antiplatelet, low-dose aspirin will actually inhibit the secretion of uric acid. Uric acid is going to accumulate in your blood, causing hyperuricemia. This can make your gout worse. This case was discussed in my video on gout. Remember Homer Simpson and you remember everything about gout. Or here is another joke. Imagine an American corporate lawyer consumes tons of German beer, English muffins, and Japanese sushi. That's how you end up with a podagra on your hallux, if you know what I'm saying. Hallux is the big toe. That's why we have the flexor hallucis longus and the flexor hallucis brevis. If you did not know that, there is just no hope for you. I'm sorry, I take it back. There is always hope. There is just no chance. Risk factors for gout include just being male, hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, alcohol use, especially beer. Remember the lawyer. Consumption of fatty food, red meat, organ meat, seafood, remember the lawyer. Trauma, surgery, and low-dose aspirin. Yeah, the corporate lawyer will definitely need low-dose aspirin to decrease his risk of heart attack and stroke. Ah, the, the joke is perfect. Ideology of gout, primary or secondary. Primary could be a genetic inborn error of purine metabolism such as Lechnian syndrome. Or it could be secondary. Overproduction or under excretion. Overproduction, anything that increases cell turnover because cell has a nucleus. The nucleus has DNA, DNA has protein. Continuous messing around with the system or like if it's working like crazy, you'll have tons of purines, eventually tons of uric acid, which is bad for you if you have gout. Example of increased cell turnover, cancer. Oh, chemotherapy used in cancer. Cell proliferation, 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 uric acid, uric acid, uric acid, cell death, cell death, that's a nucleus, that's a DNA, that's a purine, that's uric acid. Tumor lysis syndrome, oh, that's some lysis here, and lysis of a cell, the cell had a nucleus, the nucleus had DNA, DNA had purines, purines will lead to uric acid. Myral proliferative neoplasm, have you noticed the word proliferative here? Yeah, proliferation of a cell that has a nucleus, that has DNA, that has purines, that has uric acid. Hemolytic anemia, psoriasis, G6PD deficiency and fructose ingestion. That's the English muffin. Decrease excretion if your kidney is screwed. So overproduction, anything that has lysis, hemolysis, tumor lysis, rhabdomyolysis, etc. Don't forget the cancers and the chemotherapy used in cancers. People think that hyperuricemia is synonymous with gout. They are not. More than 75% of patients with hyperuricemia are asymptomatic. No gout, no podagra, no tovi, no nephropathy. There is no correlation between uric acid level and acute gouty arthritis. Oftentimes, during the acute attack of gout, serum uric acid is normal or even low. Oh, so what does increased plasma uric acid mean? It means that you are at risk, but it does not confirm the diagnosis of gout, not by any stretch of the imagination. So, uric acid in your blood, normal value, females 2.7 to 7.3, males 4 to 8.5. If it increased more than 12, oh baby, this is dangerous. So, causes of increased plasma uric acid. It could be due to increased production of uric acid or decreased excretion of uric acid. Increased production, such as ingestion of purines, the corporate lawyer, fructose, beer, seafood. Next is the genetic inborn error of metabolism, such as Lechnian syndrome, cancers, and cancer chemo. Yep, lots of cell turnover. Hemolysis, tumor lysis, rhabdomyolysis, lysis of a cell that has a nucleus, that has DNA, that has purines, that has uric acid. Decreased excretion of uric acid, on the other hand, if the kidney is screwed, because the kidney normally should excrete your uric acid. Bad kidney equals decreased excretion. Acidosis can decrease excretion. Why? This is called acidosis, right? Yeah. And what is this? Uric acid. Oh, now the kidney is between a rock and a hard place. Oh, on one hand, I need to excrete this uric acid. On the other hand, the patient has acidosis, I need to excrete the other acids. I cannot just do both. 
I will just choose one and the uric acid will simply have to stay. But why can't the kidney excrete both the uric acid and the other acid? I'll tell you why, Karen. Because if the kidney excretes both, this will decrease the pH in the kidney tubule to a pH of 2 or even 1. This severe acidosis can burn the tubule. So the kidney, just like the rest of us, is acting in her own self-interest and therefore this is the body's self-interest because I need my kidney. Also, acidosis can damage your kidney and a damaged kidney cannot excrete uric acid. Alcoholism, why? Alcohol consumption, tons of it, will lead to acidosis. Yeah, because this is ethanol. Go back to your biochemistry and the alcohol metabolism pathway. They always end in acid. Acid, baby, acid. Acidosis. Also, chronic alcoholism is not good for your kidney. Next, hyperlipoproteinemia. Oh, why? It's unknown. But if you see proteins, ah, proteins remind me of uric acid. And of course, hyperlipoproteinemia. What is the lipoproteins? Oh, we have the chylomicrones, the LDL, LDL, HDL. Oh, so you're trying to say that the liver is working like crazy? Yeah, the liver is like dividing cells rapidly? Yeah, and cell division will lead to what? Oh, tons of purines and uric acid. Hypothyroidism, why? Because in hypothyroidism, your body is lazy. Everything is lazy, even your excretion capacity. Oh, yeah, that, 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 that explains it. Also, don't forget that hypothyroidism has hyperlipoproteinemia with it. Yeah, in hypothyroidism, everything decreases except lipids in the blood these will increase next volume depletion why because if i have volume depletion and severe shock the kidney will try its best to reabsorb water and while reabsorbing water the kidney sometimes can reabsorb some uric acid this of course will lead to hyperuricemia toxemia of pregnancy and idiopathic which means we are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology what can decrease uric acid in the blood? Fanconi syndrome, Wilson disease, or lead poisoning? For some reason, we have noticed that the kidney has increased its excretion of uric acid, leading to less uric acid in the blood. And yellow atrophy of liver. If you have heard of this before, you're way ahead of me. Question of the day. How can you tell if the patient is an overproducer of uric acid or an under-excretor of uric acid? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You'll find the answer in the next video. If you like this video, you will like my premium cardiac pharmacology course that you can download right now. Go to medicosisperfectionalist.com. This has 50 videos. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell to get notified, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses today. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.